A body is projected vertically upwards with a certain speed from the top of a tower. Reaches the ground in T1 seconds. If it is projected vertically downwards from the same point with the same speed, it reaches the ground in T2 seconds. The time required to reach the ground if it is dropped from the top of the tower is. In given question, a body is projected from a tower. Let us take height of this tower is H. Initially, a body is projected in upward direction. This is the direction of projection of the body. Let us take speed of the body is U1. So, initial speed of the body is U1. It is projected in upward direction. It reaches to the ground within a time T1. Another body is projected from the same height. But this body is projected in downward direction. From the same point, same speed. But direction is a downward direction. So, this body reaches to the ground within the time T2. And another body is just dropped from the same height. Dropping. There is no initial velocity. So, third body reaches to the ground within the time. Let it be T. Here we don't know time of dropping body. Let it be T. Here we have to find out time T. Take the sign conventions. If any body is moving in downward direction, speed is negative, height is negative and also acceleration due to gravity is negative. Remember this, acceleration due to gravity is always negative. Either body is moving upward or downward. So these are the sign conventions here. So take the first case, body is projected in upward direction. So it reaches to the same height again. So from initial point to here, up to here, displacement is 0. What is the remaining displacement here from initial position to final position? Displacement is nothing but the height. So write the equation, take Equations of motion S equals to ut plus half at square. Displacement is minus h. Try to understand this. Why we are taking minus h? Because it is moving in upward direction and reaches to the same point. Up to this point displacement is 0. So remaining displacement is nothing but the height of the tower but body moving in downward direction. That's why sign is negative, minus h. This body is projected in upward direction, so u is positive. u, time is t1, but g is always acting in downward direction, acceleration is negative. Minus half g t1 square. This is the equation for the first body projected in upward direction. And now the second body is projected in downward direction with the same speed. So height is same. So displacement is minus h because moving in downward direction. Initial speed is same but negative. This body is projected in downward direction. Time is t2. g is negative. Minus half g t2 square. Take equation 2. And third body is dropped. Initial speed is 0, acceleration is negative and displacement also negative, minus h. Minus h is equals to minus half g t square. Take this is equation 3. Solve these two equations. From these two equations, we want to find the height. So, do one thing. Multiply equation 1 with t2. Equation 1 into t2. And equation 2 into t1. Here t1 is there. So, multiply with t2. Here t2 is there. So, multiply with t1. Minus h t2 is equals to u t1 t2 minus half g t1 square into t2 
minus h t1 is equals to minus u t1 t2 minus half g t2 square into t1. Take this is equation 4 and equation 5. Now add these two equations 4 plus 5 minus h t2 minus h t1. Take minus h common minus h into t1 plus t2. Plus u t1 t2 minus u t1 t2 get cancelled. Minus half g take t1 t2 also common into t1 plus t2. On both sides t1 plus t2 is there get cancelled. Minus also get cancelled. So finally h is equals to half g t1 t2. Now substitute this h in equation 3. Minus in place of h half g t1 t2 is equals to minus half g t square. On both sides minus half g get cancelled. Then t is equals to t square is equals to t1 t2. t is equals to square root of t1 t2. Where t is time taken by the freely falling body. t1 is time taken by the upward projecting body. And t2 is time taken by the downward projecting body. So finally the time taken by the freely falling body to reach the ground is square root of t1 t2. Fourth option is correct.